come with us on a voyage of ecological inquiry about the marine kelp forest ecosystem, a habitat of kelp, sea urchin, and sea otter create a most fascinating tale of ecological drama. We will attempt to take this very complex story of ecological interaction and tell the tale in a concise way. Charles Darwin in 1864 said of the kelp forest, the number of living creatures of all orders whose existence intimately depends on kelp is wonderful. Along the edges of the Eurasian and North American continents lie the Bering Sea, Arctic and Pacific Oceans, coastal edges, inshore waters of the temperate and subarctic regions are home to huge kelp forests that follow from the shore to depths of 40 to 135 feet, depending on the clarity of the water. Sunlight has to reach the bottom of this ecosystem. Kelp is in the kingdom of Chromista and is in a family called brown algae or seaweed. The forest requires high energy of 5 watts of solar power per meter. That is 3 to 4 watts higher than an average environment. Members of the red alga kingdom live in both marine and fresh water. We focus on kelp forests in shallow coastal waters from Hokkaido, Japan to middle Baja California. This great arch of marine and land contact covers a large portion of the Earth's surface, so our story is about a big picture. Kelp forest is a three-dimensional ecosystem. It reaches from the top of the water to the seafloor substrate. A single kelp individual can be 150 feet from holdfast to the tip of top blades. The frond is the term for the kelp section from holdfast to blade. A blade corresponds to the leaf of an ordinary plant. It grows out of a stipe like a branch or stem. A holdfast attaches to the earth at the sea floor, but does not work as a root because its job is just to keep the kelp in place. It has no function in nutrient uptake. Giant kelp, Macrocystis pyrifera, an 18-month cycle plant, forms large beds and forests on rocky substrate with its dying blades and bladder pods washing onto shores. I like to stomp on it when I go to the beaches, popping the bladder pods. Its range is from the middle of Baja California, Mexico to mid-coast California, USA. Ribbon kelp, Nereocystis luteana, a perennial, colonizes the coast from central California to Japan. Trophic ecology is the term relating to nutritional and energy movement. The producers in this system are red and green algae. They need sunlight, nutrient-rich upwelling, water temperatures of 42 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and a solid substrate. On each individual alga, it lists a large, dense habitat of epiphytic algae on all parts of the frond. Numerous sessile attached filter feeding animals such as sponges, sea squirts, mosses, and mollusks live on the kelp. More than 100,000 mobile invertebrates per square inch add to the huge populations of the first and second level consumers in this food web. A kelp ecosystem is structured in three layers. The surface layer consists of giant kelp blades. The middle layer is composed of stiptate kelps which are, reach a few yards in height and are often densely concentrated. The substrate is covered with a benthic grouping of mixed algal species, corals, and many other invertebrate species. This completes the description of kelp as producers with the first and second level consumers of the trophic system. Three sea urchins, 
purple, red, and white are echinoderms, consumers of kelp. Their role is the primary controller of the kelp forest density. They eat alga with five calcium carbonate teeth. Calcium carbonate and magnesium make a five-part exoskeleton called a test. Skin and spines protect the test and internal organs. Reproduction is an R-type reproductive strategy of broadcast fertilization. Females spew eggs close to the seafloor, followed by male release of gametes into the sea for fertilization. This release will often occur near the surf line for better mixing. Urchins dominate first level consumption in this food web. Sea otters eat sea urchins. North of Point Conception to Hokkaido, Japan, this otter is the keystone species. They keep the habitat from becoming destroyed by urchin overconsumption. Otter population level and health as a species makes them the indicator species for the health of the entire kelp forest ecosystem. Enhydra, the sea otter, is an attractive and playful animal. Humans regard otters as cute and cuddly, making their conservation popular. Females are distinguished from males. They are smaller. Otters breed, like all mammals, with a K reproduction strategy. The male bites the female's nose and holds her while coupling. Mother otters, therefore, have scars on their noses. Mothers are very careful of their pups, lavishing attention until the next one is born. Otters are alert during the day and forage dive, once in the morning and once in the afternoon. While resting between dives, they groom and groom and groom. The layers of their fur are their protection from cold, so they constantly tend to it. Anhydra sleep by rafting with the same gender.